Okay, so as we look at this information, what what seems to be the the most difficult, or is it just uh, uh, one of those aspects where you got to take your time? Because as far as I can tell, uh, a lot of you individuals are doing a pretty good job of, uh, let's say, not so much just showing your work, but um, labeling as you go, because that's uh, uh, certainly important to, to, to do in this process, so you know where it is you're at in the problem, especially should uh, you maybe not get a problem done all the way or you're halfway done with a, with a paper and then you got to come back to it at a later time. So, is there something that that sticks out in your mind? The limiting reactant or what might stick out in your mind? Coefficients. Okay. So, well, let's look at okay, um, page three twenty one. Three, two, one. And it's number 26, okay? And it's under limiting reactants and percent, percentage yield uh, section. So number 26, it says sulfuric acid reacts with aluminum hydroxide by double replacement. Okay? So how will we go about starting? Of course, yes, it, I realize it says sulfuric acid. Which is H2 what? Oops. Can't believe I did that. But sometimes when you're thinking too far ahead, it's easy to make those mistakes. Okay. So then it says plus aluminum hydroxide. So that's what? Okay, so notice this is negative two, that's plus one, so that's that compound's done already. So we'd always say go by the negative ion, but you can go by the positive one here because it's not a transition metal. It only has one specific charge. So hydroxide has a charge of negative what? Okay. So it's negative one, and aluminum is positive what? Okay, so since that doesn't add up to zero, what do we need to do? Okay. Let's put a two there, yeah, so, so three. So here's our double replacement reaction. All right, so do you want to start with hydrogen or aluminum? We always write the positive ions first. Okay, so what does hydrogen bond with on this side? Okay, so you could write water or you could write OH. Okay, then what do we have left over? Okay, so correct aluminum which do any of these subscripts go over to that side for sure because this this had a two behind it but we didn't carry that over did we you might say well we did there's two hydrogens here but that came from here, okay? So you said this goes over for sure. That's correct. Okay, so what's the charge of this? Negative 
2 hasn't changed. That's positive 3. That has not changed. So that does not add up to 0. Okay. Least common multiple was 6. 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. That's where they come from. So we've got our reaction. Next thing we need to do is what? Okay. So, do we need to write them out underneath the arrow, or is it one of them you can do in your head? Okay. So usually the best place to start with those is metals, usually. So we've got two aluminums on the right. How many are over here? So let's try putting a two here. Okay. Aluminums are balanced. And how many hydroxides are on this side now? Okay. Because two times three gives us that six. And how many hydroxides are over here? We just have one, okay? It's an advantage to write that as HOH, but unless you uh, can compartmentalize that and just realize that you have a hydrogen on one side and OH on the other for the charges, it might make it a little more difficult. So we've got six hydroxides, two times three. So how do we, and this is one, how do we get this up to a six? Go ahead and do that. Then, Next place to possibly start with would be uh, how many hydrogens are on the right side? Okay, and how many hydrogens are over here? So what should we put here? And notice we, when we do that, what does it do to our sulfates on both sides? Yeah, they're balanced now. So we've got two, three, two, six, one. Okay, so we're getting closer to having this set up because it's so we've got our reaction it says 30 grams of sulfuric acid 25 grams of aluminum so 30 grams of this whether you write it above or below it's whatever you feel most comfortable with and 25 grams of this okay now when we see those grams the next thing we need to do is what Well, in a, yeah, in order to do that, what do we need to find the moles first, okay? So upon doing that, let's just go ahead and start with this one, 30 grams of... Now, there's nothing wrong with writing SA, because we know that's sulfuric acid. But if you want to write H2SO4, that's fine too. But that's standing for sulfuric acid. So... How many grams are in a mole of sulfuric acid? Yes, 98.01. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, I believe so. You believe so? Okay, well, that's 64. 97.03. Okay. Point zero 0.04, we'll meet in the middle then, point zero 0.04. Okay, so now that gives us our mole. Now, do we have to refer back to the equation here? No, we do not because it's not a what yet? It's not a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, okay? So upon doing this, we take 30 divided by 98.04, and that gives us 0 0.31, correct? And we'll go ahead and leave. Sometimes if you don't get a clear and concise answer, some, sometimes you may need to extend that out. But 
moles of sulfuric acid. Now, this is what we actually what? No, that's what we actually have, okay? Yes, we've got 30 grams worth, but it's not a counting unit. So we need to realize this is what we have, okay? So next thing we want to do is take our 25 grams of aluminum hydroxide then, okay? So 25 grams of aluminum hydroxide, AH, okay? I think this marker's maybe just about had it. Okay, so for every mole, oh, so was that one. That's probably why I got them set down there. Okay, grab a different marker here. Try this guy, He's brand new. Okay, then how many grams of aluminum hydroxide? Oops, what was that? 43.44, okay, moles of aluminum hydroxide, okay, and then 25, zero point five seven moles of aluminum hydroxide. Again, that is what we have, okay. So it's at this point, we can say we're going to play a battleship to where the sulfuric acid is going to fire at the aluminum hydroxide to see what, how much we is required. And then the same thing, aluminum hydroxide fires back at sulfuric acid to see how much is, is required. Now, remember this reaction is going to proceed, it's just going to... Uh, let's say have a bearing on how much we're going to produce. That's why it's called the limiting reactant. It limits what you can actually produce. And this is just a, a way of explaining how to do so. So, we'll go ahead and start with this one. So we want to change moles of sulfuric acid into what? Remember, we just said we're playing battleship here. Okay? So, moles of sulfuric acid, mole of aluminum hydroxide. What's significant about this step? Okay, so when we see a mole to mole ratio, we look back at our equation and we need to put a two and a three there, but which one goes where? Okay, and, and again, these just come back from our balanced chemical reaction. And upon doing so, 0 0.31 times 2 divided by 3 0. Okay, and 2, 1 mole of aluminum hydroxide is, I thought I heard, I'm hearing, thanks, okay, aluminum, now this is what three letters did we put? REQ, -E or required, okay, so just somewhere here, okay, so for our aluminum hydroxide, we had 57 cents. How much is required? Okay, so do we have enough aluminum hydroxide? Yes. yes, we do. Okay, so then we could say by default then our sulfuric acid is our limiting reactant, but let's just go ahead and follow through with this just in case we had started with this one because sometimes you may be required to uh, calculate well how much excess reactant is there so what we would do is take 0.21 minus 0.57 and that would give us our excess reactant so how do we cancel this out in our next step true 
But what if we want this to cancel, does it go upstairs or downstairs? Okay. So for every mole of aluminum hydroxide, we get what on top? Sulfuric acid or SA. We got a mole to mole ratio. We refer back to our chemical reaction. Okay, so two down here, three on top. 0 0.76 mole of sulfuric acid is REQ. Okay, so at 76 cents, what did we have to start with? 31. So do we have enough of this substance? No, we do not. So what would we want to do with this up here? Label this as what? LR for limiting reactant. Okay? Because as this proceeds in steps two, or excuse me, steps B and C, what does letter B say under 26 on page 321? Oh, and 0.86 is not 0.86? Okay. But that really doesn't change. It changes the number. But are we ever going to use this again? You're, you're correct. Why, why do we not ever use this again? We're, we're, we're saying how much we actually need. Our, it's going to tell us which one runs out first, if you want to call it that as well. So therefore, that tells us this is our LR. Sulfuric acid is our limiting reactant. But on page 321, number 26, what does letter B say? Okay, so then how much of the excess reactant is, is remaining? Well, we can go back in and do our, our backtracking. And remember, we said, what would we do with these two numbers? We would subtract them, okay, and we would get 0 0.3, 0 0.3 what, 6? Then you could take that 0.36 moles of this and convert it to grams. That's one way of doing it. Okay? But typically, a lot of these questions will ask, well, how much excess reactant is remaining? Then that's what you do. You would subtract them too. But this one says, let's go one step further and take that 0.36 and convert that back to grams. But we're not concerned with that. We're going to move on to step C or letter C, and what does it say? And we're going to go one step further than that. We're going to say how many grams of each product are produced. Okay. And uh, with that, how do we even start that to say, well, X amount of grams of this and X amount of grams of that? How would we even start that? You do need to start with the limiting reactant. And you can start it one of two ways. You can say start with 30 grams, but do you need to start with this number? No, you can eliminate a step by saying we've already converted this to moles. So are we looking at this mole or uh, this one? Yeah, we want to do what we actually have, okay? So even though it says that in the book, we'll just go ahead and write the answers down. But we're more so concerned uh, with the, the grams produced. So it's... Oh, I thought when you read that, you said de I thought you said determine the moles of each product form. Okay, all right. Yes, 25 says that. I was going to say that's rather strange that they would ask for moles, but 
So yes, 26C is saying determine the mass of each product formed. Okay, so typically you would say it's a four-step problem, but we eliminate one by starting with this number because it's what we have. Not what we think we need before it runs out, but what we have, 0 0.31. 0 0.31 mole of sulfuric acid. So you go ahead and pick, pick a product. Okay, so water. So how do we get rid of this mole of sulfuric acid in our second step here? Okay, so mole of sulfuric acid, and what would we put on top? Not quite yet. No, because we're still on sulfuric acid. We're still on the left side of the equation. We need to get to the right side. Okay, so if that's the case, we want moles of what then? Okay, so now we can write that as H2O or HOH. Same thing. So, do we need to go back to our equation with this? Yes, because what do we have in front of here? So that 6 goes here. What about this? 3. So now, these are, now we're in moles of water. Now we can change it to what? So, and how do we go about doing that? So for every mole of H2O, how many grams of H2O do we get? Okay. So, what I'm going to do Okay, so we've got this mole of water down here. Do we need a coefficient? No, because this is not a what? It's not a mole to mole ratio like this step is. So these have canceled. We are now in grams of water, and that's what we want. So up in that upper right-hand corner, I wrote 30, 34.9 and 11.0. Which one of those is correct? See what they did. Um, they had 11.0, so um, yeah, 11.17. We'll go ahead and go with that. Okay. So, how how is it that we, what would we have to do? We have to change a whole lot of information in here. No. Really, the only places we need to change would be here. Because rather than grams of water, we want grams of what instead? So aluminum sulfate. So this is not a mole of water anymore. It is a mole of aluminum sulfate. And then what about here? Do we need to change the bottom? No, because we're still starting with our same amount here. So rather than a 6 here, there should be what? Just a one because we've got a one up here. So go ahead and do that as well. Mole of aluminum sulfate. Okay. So if we take 0 0.31 times, well, whatever this is, 0 0.05, I heard that. One, 
103. Didn't you say 0 0.05? Okay, so 103, 123, 123, okay. So go ahead, take 0 0.31 times 123, divide by 3. Really? No. Because what's the atomic mass of oxygen? You didn't triple that, did you? You don't triple the aluminum. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. All right, that sounds a little better. That's, that's I didn't think that could be right. All right, so say that three hundred some. Okay. Well, what we see happening here is some they this might have been extended out a little further. Okay, so we are doing these correctly. So if we said, well, we got 15 minutes left, which which we don't, say we're going to start our problem quiz now. No. Why is that? It, it, it does, so it, it, it's a, it is attention to detail, yeah. okay? So we have a problem quiz two tomorrow, so let's be ready to go. If you have any problems, please get in and talk to me. So, or is there another one you'd like to go over, or do you just want to sit and self-reflect? And... I'll talk to the flag about that's a problem. Okay, all right, fair enough. Be ready to go tomorrow, and it's Friday.